welcome to this video where I will be using lava in two different ways. One way will be just in a basket and another way will be as in self-watering. But we are going to start with what I would consider the easiest first because the dendrobium pocket lover here is going to be quite the fiddle. So I just received two new Tolumnias. They have had plenty of time to acclimate. There is no real rocket science behind acclimating Tolumnias. Give them enough water, let them dry out fast enough, and then get them potted up in the setup that you want or mount them. That's all there is to it. So of course there's a little bit of a fiddle to get them out of their baskets, but usually it's not that big a deal. Just have to make sure that we will be getting the right label with the right tolumnia. Did I just kink that root? No, I didn't. Wow, that's a long root. Don't even know if you can see that. Let's see if that works better. That's a nice surprise. Long roots in the pot. Well, it's not really a pot, it's a basket. But yeah, it'll be great to get these established, situated and put away. So we have Tolumnia Spotty Gyrac Firm. That's your label. That's your basket. One after the other. Okay, so with these little Tolumnia baskets, what I did many, many years ago is I folded a big microfiber piece into the bottom just to help with a little bit of humidity retention and seeing as I don't have that high humidity in my climate here in southern Spain, but mainly also to be able to somehow ward off all the dripping that can happen when they are hanging in their summer location and I just randomly spray them. And then I have me some lava rock here. These are medium sized pieces of lava rock. I've already also used large pieces of lava rock, depending on how much space the mesh basket has around the edge because clearly you don't want the lava rock to be you know sliding out of the gaps so in this little hexagon i've got medium-sized lava rock which also retains quite a lot of humidity great for my climate and then we take the cutie and we put it into the middle <laughs> If you've seen my other videos, I've been uh, trying to center other Tolumnias I've had longer in my collection. And um, yes, put them back into the middle because this is a setup that is very, very cute. I love it. But well, Tolumnias have a rhizome and they will grow and do their thing and eventually lean out of the basket or grow out of the basket either way. But yeah, this is a bit of a fiddle job. Not sure how good my hands are going to be for this delicate job, but we'll do our best. And then as gently as possible, fill around and support the Tolumnia in the middle in her position. Trying to capture as many of the unruly roots that are there. <laughs> they are so cute. This way, the Tolumnia has a lot of airflow around the roots, but you see how she's already moved across? <laughs> yeah, Tolumnias, Tolumnias. It's a bit of a fandangle, a bit of a fiddle, but you know, it's a good thing to take your time at this point in time, and then hopefully not have to do this for another four years. That's how long these baskets have lasted for the Tolumnias that I could just recenter. Whereas others have gotten so big, I've had to repot them because there was no way to thread them back into the basket. Would you stay? Yeah, so, you know, we want our orchids to grow and they might outgrow a certain setup. And for some Tolumnias, judging by the size of them, you need like a mini bird cage if you want to maintain. <laughs> this kind of a wire basket setup. So where are you now? We've scooted off to the right. I am being super gentle. I know I'm putting root tips at risk. Comes with the territory. Another idea would have been just 
to leave that tulumnia in her basket and then pot her up with the basket. So if the other one is even more delicate, that is probably what I'm going to do. But I would like them to be kind of free of their baskets. It makes anything in the future a little easier. You are gorgeous sticking up like that, but I do want you to lower a little bit just because you need water around you. There we go. This is so much more airy than it looks, but I think this is going to work nicely. So now we're just going to have to make it official and get the tag on her. Okay, next one. Let's have a look, see what we're dealing with here. Single fan. Doop, doop, doop. Root attached to tag. Hmm. Aren't they cute? Are you going to come out willingly? Where are you attached? This root is not the problem the root around the tag and around the hook of course <laughs> of course why not let's see if we can snipe that out we'll check that out oh nice that's why we're fiddling here so you got one obstruction in the basket <laughs> and that's the one obstruction that the roots went through. There we go. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, it should come out easily now. <laughs> come on, you. Freedom. Okay, one fan, gorgeous root. Let's do as little damage as possible. Gorgeous roots coming out the back there. And I hope all this is in focus. Let's try this way. Look at that. Amazing. Right. Same procedure. I am now super careful about the root tips that are over here. So I'm going to start with one side that I can see. And I've got you guys facing the other root tips. You'll see more than I am at the moment. So leave it in the comments if there's anything happening. <laughs> well, by that time it may be too late, but yikes. This is a little bit precarious. I don't want too many abrasions on those root tips. Okay, whoop. I guess this is going to be the tweezer job. Now normally I would uh, have all my tulumnias hanging outside. That is not going to be the case with these ones. They have been living outside since their arrival, so it's not like they can't take the temperatures. It's the breeze I'm concerned about. I don't want them going wobbling back and forth. So they will be sitting inside very, very close to the opening of the terrace door until they have rooted in. So they'll get plenty of airflow, lots and lots of bright light. But the idea being, I don't want them swaying back and forth, susceptible to the breeze or in my case, strong airflow. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that as a gap there by that root tip. And the other root tips are pretty well covered. Looks like the base is a bit low, but as it is this time of year, there's plenty of airflow around the base. I am not concerned about rot. What I would like to have is this one root a little bit lower. There we go. Just restrain it, otherwise it will dry out. It's not a matter of, oh, 
it might not but it will you see i cannot spray these aggressively watering these will probably consist of me taking the basket and dunking it or leaving it standing in a saucer of water using the microfiber at the base for the humidity and the wicking i can't spray these just yet because they are not going to be exposed to the elements that the others are which i can spray a little bit more radically but that's about it and i'm going to get the tag on off camera but we've got our tolumnias situated let's move on to our dendrobium pocket lover and do another version of lava rock Okay, my plan for my Dendrobium Pocket Lover, while we wait for the utensils to evaporate the alcohol, let's turn that sentence around, while we wait for the alcohol to evaporate on our utensils. There, that's how. <laughs> oh, anyway, yes, yeah, so let's prepare our pot. I am putting it into self-watering, but self-watering and lava rock well, I am not a fan of lava rock on roots. However, this orchid is kind of precious to me because she came from Dana Mosanu. So yes, no risks are going to be taken here. And what I'm going to do is show you that I'm going to eliminate as much of the lava rock issue as I possibly can so that in future repots, I hopefully will be able to salvage roots because this orchid is pretty vigorous. So I've got some really, really, what I call dirty lecker. Let's show you that. You see those shards? This is from a batch of lecker that I purchased. This is not what lecker should look like. But, you know, for crocking and things like that, it's perfectly fine. I call it dirty because I wouldn't use it in a full-on setup, but to occupy space and then save a little bit on the actual, you know, really meaningful expensive let's say lava rock or the better media then i will definitely use it for cropping now the roots of a pocket lover are pretty pretty let's say they can get down into the media so when i have positioned the orchid this is going to be like the lowest point if the roots get down there perfect it won't be a problem because they will have established themselves around the lava rock, which will be the next layer. But this little orchid is going to provide a little bit of a challenge. I do not want her shifting and wobbling around the pot. She is not yet growing me enough roots where I would say, woohoo, we're on our way. But these roots right here, this is, a, I want to get going. I want to put her in. The longer these roots get, the harder it will be to maintain them. I was thinking of taking off some of the roots at the base, but I'm going to opt against that. I'm going to use those as anchoring utensils, let's just say. You see? I would like to see a little bit more root vigor, but if this is all she has available for me right now, we are going to take advantage of that and make it happen so that they will grow into the pot and at least then I won't keep bashing them. Because from what I can understand, this little pocket lover likes to be treated like any other dendrobium per se. You want a wet dry cycle. However, self-watering is not a wet dry cycle. But one of the media that I can really suggest for self-watering in a drier setup, if you are okay with the fact that lava rock is a real destroyer of roots when it comes to repotting, is lava rock because even though it in itself is not a wicking agent it retains a lot a lot of moisture because of all the nooks and crevices and crannies so the wicking agent could be my lecker but i also have a setup of just lava rock with dendrobiums and it's working beautifully in the self-watering concept the thing here with these i have so many little pieces and to get them all into the pot and keep them steady yeah, I don't think I want to go down that route, so we are going to daisy chain them together and see if we cannot make a little cluster that will work in their favor, that they can support each other, <laughs> and then also 
be a little bit more stable in the pot. And this is where I mentioned earlier, the fiddle is coming in. So first of all, I'm not trying to really put them all back to back, so to speak. As these are somewhat divisions, they can pop out new growths anywhere. So the idea is just to get them somehow together, you know, like a trio, and then pop them up in a single cluster, although they are separate. This is how I would like to see them together. Now, the challenge is going to be, am I gonna be able to do that? And that is not a trick question. That is literally my challenge now. I've done this before with other keikis. I've done it before with bulbar films. The thing is, the other wire that I have is a lot more sturdy, and I cannot be using that around these guys because these guys are very, very delicate as opposed to, let's say, a bulbophyllum rhizome. So now the idea is to find a cane that is, let's say, the stronger of all of them, not necessarily the one that has all the new roots coming out of it, because <clears throat> if something were to go wrong here, that's the last cane that I want to destroy. The thing with dendrobiums, if I don't hit the base, if I don't harm the base, a dendrobium cane can be damaged, but it will still perform its function at the base. So <laughs> that is my saving grace here. So you see, I've tied one on. Now, the idea is to get the next one. See, that was the easy part. <laughs> the idea now is to get the next one attached. Daisy chain styly. So I'm going to focus on what I'm doing, keep you in focus, and make sure that I get this right. Roots, this is the cane I want. Maybe this one. Can I go with the last one, make life easier? Let's try the last one. And this is now where it gets really, let's say, hairy, because on one hand, we want them together. On the other hand, we've got roots to protect. And the more that we do this, of course, the more manipulation there is. And my other option is to go back to what I also could do, is to wrap wire around them individually and put a stake into the pot. But I want to try it this way. I want to give this a go. Eventually, we can remove the wire. All right. That would be two. Next one. Roots right here. Good growth. Fabulous cane right in the back here. We're going to use that one. Now, this all may look a little bit haphazard, but we can easily, easily adjust that now. See if we can get them all at the right height at the base. Let's see. Once you get one in place, you get the next one in place. And of course, the third one slips all the way down, of course, as you know, nothing is that straightforward, but it works. And then we can also opt to turn the orchid into position because the wire, of course, has flex. There we go. We've got growth point here, growth point here, and growth point back here. Sorry for that. There we go. Now we're going to try and get them into the pot. I'm going to put them in the middle. And no, I'm not cutting off any, any roots. The reason being, this is not just for anchoring now. This is also like a protective cushion. The old roots against 
the lava rock. If new roots grow, sometimes they will grow along the most moist part, which are the old roots. First of all, I don't have enough old roots in here to ever pose a problem. So that's one of the things. But secondly, when it comes to repotting, the old roots will act as a buffer and the lava rock will fall off much, much easier, giving me some kind of a cushion, a margin to be able to be more careful and more easy on any roots that may have grown into lava rock. I hope that makes sense. Because of course the old roots are not going to attach to anything and should they branch, you know, the same principle applies. I'm, I'm really sort of trying to plan ahead when it comes to repotting and making sure that the orchid is going to be okay when that time comes. Just judging the height now. So let's fill her up. Now, if these roots were super duper alive, I would be putting in water because it also lets the lava rock fall gently around the root system, the existing root system. There's no need for that here. These roots, some of them may be functioning, some of them may not be functioning anymore. Not a problem. My main focus is to get this orchid in the position that I want her with the new roots growing into the media. End of story. Just checking now, I've got a new growth right here, another new growth right there, and the new growth of this is right here. So yeah, I'm happy with that. And she is positioned fairly centered. That's good enough for me. And in you go. We need to secure her on this side. Depending on the size of the roots, I also differentiate between large lava rock and small lava rock because of course the larger the pieces the drier is the environment and the climate is in the pot so these roots pretty fine you know not small maybe medium to small size they get medium to small size lava rock if a dendrobium has big and fleshy and chunky roots then I would opt for chunky big lava rock makes all the difference because that gives the roots the same climate. The wicking process again is non-existent in lava rock. That is not to be mistaken with how much water retention there is in between all the crevices and the cracks that lava rock has naturally. In this setup with self-watering, it's about using the water retention characteristic of the lava rock in the favor of getting water distributed throughout the pot somewhat evenly. I could fuss with this for several more minutes, but first of all, I want to make sure that everything is somewhat settled in and around there. Got the new roots right here. Back of one growth, let's double check another growth and then what could be considered two leads over here and beautifully positioned in the pot Woohoo! and now we can tie her off excuse my hand there for a moment now we can tie the rest of this wire onto the support which is only there because of this very delicate let's say maneuvering positioning of the orchid. I have no intention of using this support for anything else but just to keep the orchid nicely and securely in the pot. And I think we've achieved that. Awesome. Now what I also normally do is before filling up with media, I normally put my tag in so that I don't jiggle anything around and aggravate any roots, but no roots in the pot that need to be respected. So this is pretty much it. Let's have a good look see, because now we can tilt the pot and see if the sun is going to help us or be a problem. So we've got that nice little new growth facing outwards. We've got these two growths right in here, these two facing outwards. And any eyes that want to grow <laughs> sporadically, please be my guest. One more thing though, we want to flush this through just with plain RO water. No roots, there is no need to do anything other than just flush through. 
the lava rock had been washed, soaked, boiled, dried, etc., etc. It was in a container that was sealed air tight, and it turned out there was still dust on it, so I washed it again. Didn't have to boil it this time around, but just to get that last bit of dust off. And here is the cutest of dendrobiums that I so look forward to seeing doing well. Everything from here on in is just flushing. As the roots are growing, that's all I want, is to just retain water and humidity in this pot. No fertilizer, no supplements, nothing. There is nothing in the pot that the orchid can draw from. So, root growth, and then when it comes time to repot, I am sure that my older roots will give me a margin where the lava rock will just fall off. But then there will also be some kind of tricky issues with all the new roots that have grown into the lava. But we will cross that bridge when the time comes. For now, pocket lava should be happy in this pot for at least, <laughs> depending on its growth habit, four years. That is the plan. So I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so very much for your time. Hope you found this interesting. Any questions you may have, comments are there for a reason. I wish you a beautiful day. But, you know, I do attach a condition to that. And that would be that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.